Well, I caught a little bout of COVID this weekend, and I binged the whole series of Mystery at Blind Frog Ranch. So let's get in here. Let's talk about it. This is a fascinating show. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe, and please hit the bell to be notified of future videos and share on social media when this drops. Oh, and I'm fine. I'm still shaking it off a little bit. If, if my uh, uh, nasal, if I sound a little nasal today or more nasally than usual, then uh, uh, yeah, that's why. But uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed this series. I, I had watched the first episode, uh, maybe like six months ago, somebody had recommended it. You know, it's uh, this really interesting ranch just down the road from Skinwalker Ranch. And, uh, you know, I, I watched the first episode, but it seemed more like a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a treasure hunting show, you know, a treasure hunting show like the like the Oak Island thing. Uh, and I just don't have any interest in treasure hunting shows. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I hope they find the treasure, you know, good for them. That's great. But, you know, I, I would be much more interested if it were focused on the paranormal aspects. Uh, and the first episode just wasn't. And, and the whole, whole series isn't. I don't want to mischaracterize the show. But I didn't have anything better to do. I didn't want to, to watch anything that was on my queue of things to watch that I actually cared about. Because I was not in the real condition to watch uh, something like that. Uh, yeah, I've been wanting to watch The Boys, for example, uh, but I, I, you know, I wanted to enjoy it. And, you know, I, I wanted to put something on that I didn't care if I enjoyed or not. I just wanted something on. Uh, and uh, so I put it on and I actually did enjoy it. It's a, it's a very well done show, very well edited show. Sometimes I think it's edited to its detriment. Um, you know, the, the producers and editors shape the narrative in such a way that it almost feels well fictional at times. And I think that there, I mean, of course there are people who have accused the show of hoaxing things and, uh, being fraudulent. I, I, I don't get that impression. I, I think that, um, you know, like for example, and by the way, this is going to be spoilers. This is a spoiler heavy, uh, commentary on mystery of blind frog ranch. Uh, this is not going to be a beat per beat breakdown of the episodes or even the two seasons available. This is just going to be my overall impressions. But the most glaring possible hoax uh, that stuck out to me in the first season was when the guy went into a trance. They, 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 there's the security camera that catches this trespasser going into this weird trance-like thing, and they run out after him, uh, calling him uh, the Skinwalker, because they had had some mutilated animals, and uh, they had uh, see, episodes two and three really leaned into the Skinwalker mythology and narrative. That's actually what got my attention, and I, I will talk about the Skinwalker stuff presently. Uh, but just talking about the possible hoaxing, um, you know, this fellow was a white guy. He was a gringo. Uh, if they were going to hoax a Skinwalker going into a trance, I don't think they would have chosen a gringo. So, uh, yeah, that just wouldn't be believable. It doesn't really make sense. Uh, so I don't think that was a hoax. And if that wasn't a hoax, then, you know, probably the rest of it is not a hoax either. Uh, that's not to say that it's not your typical reality show, you know, stuff. And, you know, they're going to reshoot some scenes, you know, like Travis Taylor has talked about on, uh, you know, The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, how, you know, if they didn't have coverage of a particular, you know, uh, incident, like, you know, he's saying, look, it's a UFO. Uh, well, if the camera wasn't on Travis when he said that, they might ask him to repeat that. And so that is uh, just, you know, that's what you get with a reality show. And that's normal. And there's really no way around that uh, unless you don't want that particular cover coverage. If you don't want Travis saying, you know, look, it's a UFO, then uh, I guess you can have a really raw, uh, unsatisfying reality show. Or at least that would be unsatisfying to me. But, you know, let me know what you think. I mean, a part of me thinks it might be fun just to have a really raw show that was all real and uh, there was no editing uh, to make it more, you know, palatable. Anyway, so I, de I don't think it's a, a, a hoax. I don't think anything in particular is hoax on the show. I, I think it's all legit. 
Um, and it gets even crazier when you listen to uh, Dwayne, uh, the owner of the ranch, talk. Uh, he's given a couple of presentations. Um, and I just watched one that was really crazy, really, really wild, really wild. I shouldn't use the word crazy, but, uh, really interesting. And I may have to talk about that in a future video because that is outside the scope of this video. So let's talk about the skinwalker thing, right? That's the thing that, that really got my attention, uh, in the series. You know, I started episode two and, uh, boom, there was a mutilated deer and, uh, sure enough, it had a lot of the same hallmarks as ca mutilated cattle, uh, you know, genitals missing, uh, it, you know, other, you know, the head was ripped off. Um, there didn't seem to be any blood, um, in the area. Uh, so, um, you know, I wish they had a scientist on hand to, or, you know, an MD or something to, to do an investigation of that. But this is not a scientific endeavor. This is a treasure hunting endeavor. There is a box of Aztec gold or something in a cave. Yeah, the first season and a half, you could just call the show What's in the Box. I mean, it, 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 that's what it is. It's what's in the box. What the hell is in that box? Then you find out uh, halfway through season two, it's in the box. And it just leads to more you know, questions, which would be typical of a show like this, right? So, and if it were a fictional narrative, that's, that would make sense. So, uh, but I don't think it is. Because what they found in the box is weird, but we'll, we'll get to that later. So uh, the skinwalker thing. Um, are there skinwalkers? Are there skinwalkers? I say that after having just read the book Skinwalkers at the Pentagon by George Knapp, James Latasky, uh, and uh, the other fella. I've got COVID brain, so I'm uh, re remind me uh, remind me who that is. Uh, but uh, they talk about skinwalkers. They talk about how bass sent uh, uh, teams out or, you know, people out, investigators out within a 50 mile radius of Skinwalker Ranch to interview people in the Uintah Basin. Uh, and yeah, they, they've, they've seen stuff. And one of the things they've seen is the dog man, the, the werewolf, the skinwalker. And they've seen this so often uh, from such credible people that uh, Bass or Allsap uh, was even able to uh, plot the migratory habits of these beings. Uh, so what are these beings? Uh, they have been reported over and over again. The giant wolf, the wolf man. Um, so what is that? Is that a skinwalker? You know, on episode two or three of Mystery at Blind Frog Ranch, they, they interview a Native American. And he says what I've heard them, you know, uh, say say before, uh, you know, the what a skinwalker is, is a, a uh, villainous uh, medicine man. Um, and, you know, a few years ago, you know, heck, a year ago, I would have thought, yeah, okay, pull the other leg, right? Medicine man, whatever. All right. Um, but, you know, I no longer think that way. I went to an ayahuasca retreat. I've been to two of them now, but the first one I went to, conducted by a shaman uh, of the Shipibo tribe. I'm 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 saying that wrong. Uh, Shipibo um, of Peru in the in the Amazon, uh, the Amazonian Peru. Um, well, he cured me. Uh, it's not why I went there. I went there to finish my enlightenment experience that I. Uh, began with my Kundalini awakening. Um, but it's not what I got. I didn't get what I wanted. I got what I needed. I got, I was healed of a birth defect that has governed my life. Uh, it's really been a big deal in my life. And um, the shaman, the Ayahuascaro, healed me. Actually, there are two of them. I, 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 give, I give both of them credit. Two shamans. Two wonderful, amazing shamans. Um, and, uh, they healed me. I don't understand the process by which they healed me. Was it the shaman acting as a conduit for greater energies like, you know, in Reiki, uh, is, is the shaman, you know, governing this other 
other energy that is in, in, in the field of the ceremony? Is it the actual plant, the, the, the plant spirit, uh, Mother Aya or Grandmother Aya? Um, is there an entity? Is Grandmother Aya an entity? Because that's what people of his tribe believe, is that there are plant spirits. And Mother Aya is just one of numerous plant spirits, and not even the strongest or, more, or more, most powerful. Well, I'm not going to go into a long lecture about that, but suffice it to say that I was convinced uh, of the reality of tribal uh, spirituality, magic, um, you know, wh whatever you want to call it. I was deeply impressed. I, it changed my life. It changed my freaking life. It really did. It really did. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, so that being said, if there are legit medicine, medicine men, and presumably women, if there are legit medicine men that are goodly, like my guys, it stands to reason that there could be bad medicine men that have their own interests at heart and not others. Um, so, yeah. So now I'm, I'm wondering, are there skinwalkers? Could there be villainous medicine men that can do bad things? Uh, can they even change shape? Is that a thing? So I thought that was really intriguing. I was hoping the show would dive deeper into the Skinwalker lore and really pursue that storyline and that theme. Unfortunately, they didn't. Uh, they, they didn't pursue it at all. They dropped it after a couple episodes and basically never referred to it again. Uh, so, you know, too bad, too bad. Really is, because I'm very interested in that subject now. Um, it's, you know, hard for me to wrap my mind around, uh, around the idea that there are real life skinwalkers or werewolves or, or whatever these things are, but it, it, whatever they are, it seems to be a thing. Are they humans or were they humans? Is it something else? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Okay. I just want to quickly touch on some of the other interesting phenomena on the ranch, on uh, the blind frog ranch. Uh, so we've got this energy zone, this energetic area where they can transmute sand into metal or at least a substance having a lot of metal in it. Uh, that is really, really fascinating. Um, I don't know what that means. I think, you know, you, you get into the subject of energy and the earth and you Think of, you know, ley, ley lines and um, interesting stuff like that. Some areas seem to be, you know, charged with a very good energy. Some, you know, a negative energy. It's possible that that area on Blind Frog Ranch is a very good energy. Whereas the area, or, you know, at least some of Skinwalker Ranch uh, is, is possibly very negative. Um, you know, I don't know, but I think that is fascinating. If that's true, it's, it's particularly fascinating because they're so close together. Um, but yeah, yeah, so that was really intriguing. They, they did have a geolog geologist on hand to examine the rocks and to, uh, you know, do a, a, an investigation of that. You know, he was kind of left scratching his head though. Um, and they didn't pursue it beyond that but highly intriguing and interesting okay let's talk about the men in black yes the men in black appear several times in the series we've got black helicopters flying overhead distracting the team while other agents go and wreck their stuff and steal their samples or whatever and uh yeah or, or maybe that was the occasion where they had the black suvs show up on their ranch Again, distracting uh, the, the, the main guys while a team sneaks in and they were actually able to get these guys on a trail cam, uh, a security camera that they had set up, um, uh, breaking into their, their, their area 
and, uh, you know, wrecking their stuff and stealing their samples. I believe that's the case. That's the situation where they stole the samples. The first time they were, they broke into the uh, film crew's camera uh, uh, quarters and uh, wrecked some stuff and maybe, you know, stole some stuff. They, they, again, they did not follow up with, you know, any of these, you know, threads. This show is all about what's in the box and then what, what, what comes after that. Uh, you know, it's not focused on really coming to grips with any of these mysteries. But yeah, so the men in black are a present force. You know, if they are the men in black, maybe it's some other agency out there or some other group out there. It's totally possible. Completely possible. Uh, but they have military grade spy equipment um, on the property, spying on the guys. Um, they got, you know, they're able, they're capable of, you know, commandeering black helicopters that are like military helicopters, black SUVs, uh, you know, agents that are, you know, trained agents. They can go and sneak in and wreck stuff and steal stuff. Uh, so, you know, are they the men in black? Is that something else? Uh, they are, you know, pretty much indistinguishable from the men in black as far as I can tell. Okay, so what is in the box? The whole series uh, is built around this box that uh, may or may not be made by the Aztecs. It's in this flooded cave, and they're trying to get to this uh, this box, which is filled with stones, and they hope that there's some buried treasure under there. Well, in Season 2, we find out that the box is indeed old enough to be made by the Aztecs. And there is some weird stuff in that box. But it's not buried treasure at least not gold, it's the rocks. More precisely, whoever put the rocks in there uh, cored out the rocks and poured this weird metal, this gallium, uh, into the, the, you know, the channels of the rock. And the water may have been uh, to keep the stones and the gallium cool because they turn into liquid uh, when, they get war when it gets warm. So they, they find these rocks, they, they break them open, uh, and they, they discover this weird gallium, which was not invented until the 1800s, long before the, long after the Essex came, came along. And, uh, you know, obviously. So, what the hell? Because the box, uh, apparently, uh, dates back to the 1500s. So why is this weird material in the box? And, okay, so the box is located in this cavern that's one of a a uh, set of caverns. They, they say there's seven caverns and that corresponds to the, the, the lore about the Aztecs and the Montezuma's missing gold. Uh, so, you know, they have a lot, a lot left to explore and uncover uh, as the series progresses, assuming we get a season three. Um, you know, yeah, I hope that happens because it goes to some really interesting places. We have the men in black trying to shut them out, shut them down on the eve of them going down into a hole, you know, 100 feet deep and finding this, you know, ancient tunnel uh, going God knows where. Was it an old mine of some miners, you know, something boring or is it something more exotic? Uh, you know, I, I, I want to get some answers to that. I really do. I, I think this is a fascinating uh, show. Uh, it does not follow up on any of the threads that it, it dangles before you really. Um, and there's a whole bunch more that I have not covered, but I've hit some of the highlights and I don't want this to be uh, too long of a video. Um, but it's a very intriguing show, very entertaining. Sometimes, like I say, I think that it's edited so well that it's edited to its detriment because it, you know, it, it, it does... It, it feels like a story, you know, but it's a story with a lot of dangling threads. Uh, so I think that if it were fictional, it would it would pursue those threads a little more cohesively. Uh, but, you know, I'm loving the show. Uh, please, please give this a season three um, and I will be there. Uh, there is more to cover if you guys like this video and are interested in Blind Frog Ranch, let me know in the comments below because I have some additional material to go over. It gets weirder. 
it gets much weirder than what I have laid out before you today. Anyway, those are my thoughts, guys. Uh, what do you think? Have you seen the show? What do you think about it? And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Please smash the subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss a single video. Please join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. And please, if you enjoy these videos, please consider supporting the channel by becoming a channel member. See the first line in the description below. And there's two tiers of membership to receive exclusive access in videos. Until next time, this is Jack with Cosmic Road.